In an interview with CNBC last week, Joel Greenblatt compared the stock market to a jar of jelly beans. And I thought the metaphor was particularly apropos. So I wanted to share it with you and explain why Greenblatt suggests that stock pickers can still have an advantage in the market today. Coming up. Hey there, my name is Steven Spicer and it's my goal to help you invest smarter. And I tend to agree with Mr. Greenblatt that if you know what you're looking for and are disciplined, you can outperform the market over the long run. And that's one of my goals here with this channel to help those who are interested in trying to find those hidden gems know what they're looking for. So if that's important to you, if you're interested in knowing where to look for undervalued stocks, click that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss a thing. Now, if you've been with me for a while, you know who Joel Greenblatt is and you know that I'm a big fan. And if you're new here, I have an old video on him that you might find interesting and might be helpful. And I actually have another video coming out soon about his top holdings today. When this man speaks, I listen. And here's why. From 1985 through 2005, his fund averaged an annualized return of around 40%. We'll explore the details of that history more in the next video, but I hope that's reason enough for you too to care what he has to say. Well, in that CNBC interview, he was asked about active managers being able to beat the market over the long run. As part of his answer, he talked about the jelly beans. I'm gonna share that with you and then we'll unpack his answer to this question. And, and as I'm telling you this story, if you like jelly beans, I hope you'll hit that like button. So he told this story about the time that he was explaining the stock market to a group of students at an inner city high school in New York. He brought with him a large jar full of jelly beans. He gave each student a note card and told them to privately do whatever they needed to do to come up with their best guess for how many jelly beans there actually were in that jar. You know the game, and I'm sure you're familiar with some of the strategies, counting as many that you can that lay across the top and, and then figuring out how many rows deep it is, you know. So the kids did that. Then they all privately wrote down their answers and Greenblatt collected the cards. Then he asked them to one by one publicly make a guess. The students were allowed to change their answers if they wanted to from what they had written on the note cards. So one at a time, each student, out loud this time, announced their guess to the entire class. So the last kid to go, the 35th student, had already heard 34 other answers. Greenblatt kept a record of all the guesses. After they were done, he averaged the answers given both privately on the note cards and publicly. The actual number of jelly beans was 1,776. And he said the average provided by the students via the note cards was 1,771. They were really close. Yet somehow, the average answer provided publicly, even after they had given their own private answer, publicly was only 881. The average of the answers given publicly, that's the stock market, he told the students. His point is, if you or an active money manager can find a way to block out the noise and just focus on a methodical valuation approach and understanding of, of what it is that you're looking at and, and what it is that you're looking for, you can have an advantage in this market. That's why my goal is to share with you ideas to get your wheels turning, to get you excited about digging into some stock, but to be careful to not tell you how to invest. Even though those stocks to buy videos and other sorts of financial porn perform way better in the algorithms. It's a fine line that I'm still trying to figure out, but with your help, I'm confident that we'll get there. Greenblatt went on to give a real world example of a mutual fund recently that had outperformed the market over a 10 year span. Yet the average investor in that fund had somehow amazingly managed to lose an annualized 11%. Insane. The Magellan Fund is probably the quintessential example of this phenomena. Legendary fund manager Peter Lynch averaged the insane annualized return of 29% during his 13 year tenure from 77 through 1990. Yet somehow, the average investor in that fund lost money. That's hard to believe, right? How could you take an actively managed fund that you could have just, in hindsight, sat tight and averaged a near 30% annualized return. How could you take that and somehow manage to lose? Well, that's exactly what the average investor in that fund did. 
It's because we as investors tend to enter and exit at all the wrong times. And a deep dive into the psychology there is an important subject for another time, another video. It's also one of my points for why modern portfolio theory, the way everyone tells you to invest, doesn't work in practice. Greenblatt further explains that the cycles of these fund managers, the good ones, and that's another challenge. I'd still say that the majority aren't good, but I think there is enough evidence to suggest that there are some very skilled asset and fund managers out there. But the cycles of their funds, the ups and downs, the peaks and troughs, do not necessarily correlate with that of the market or of the other funds. In fact, they almost assuredly don't. What that means with regard to the public in the market or the public in those funds is that after a particular fund has a year or two of underperforming, just like the Magellan Fund did, it did have some years that over that 13 year stretch where it underperformed. As that happens, more and more investors jump ship all the way through to the very bottom where more people are leaving than at any point before. They're moving into something else that has been outperforming over the last couple of years that is perhaps approaching its peak, where more people will enter than at any point before. That happens. On average, more people enter at the peak of a fund or market cycle, and more people exit at the bottom than at any other point in the cycle, which is the exact opposite of what we should be doing. That first fund then starts to do better, and that fund that everyone moved into then starts to do worse rinse and repeat for the public. That's how the average investor loses so much. That's why picking funds based on their performance over the last several years, as Dave Ramsey suggests, for example, doesn't make sense. It doesn't work. And that's something that's been researched and proven several times over. The same thing happens with active managers and passive investing. Many active managers like Greenblatt's current fund, for example, are not only trying to outperform right now during this bull market, but they're also trying to be well positioned so that when the crash does come, they can really outperform over the long run, which for most is what really matters anyway, right? And being positioned and prepared for a crash like that makes it harder to outperform when the market's hot, like it is now. But that doesn't mean it's not the right thing for them to do to be best positioned for the long run. And that comes back to my core message. Uh, when I talk in my, my book about how a stock and bond only portfolio is a potentially ruinous way to invest, <laughs> despite everything you hear most advisors and pundits regurgitate. So rather than just investing passively because that's what's hot right now, if you have any interest at all in learning to invest on your own, which I assume you do since you're watching this, since you're still watching this video, then continue to learn as much as you possibly can about building out a portfolio that will best protect and grow your assets no matter what happens in the future. Even if you're underperforming in a given year or two or three, that doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. Just keep learning and growing and doing what makes sense to you. And over the long run, you can put yourself in the best possible position to outperform. And that's my goal to help you on that journey. So if you're not subscribed already, I hope you'll do so now and click that bell. I'd love to help however I can. And if you're not interested in, in learning all of that on your own, find someone you can trust to help you manage your money. Take that decision very seriously. And don't wait until the market is crashing to critically consider this crucial part of your financial plan. I wish you all the best. Take care.